Yo, Tasty Nation, it's the Canadian Options Trader here. Today I'm going to talk about Micro Futures. I love these products, the Micro Futures, and especially the options on the Micro Futures. Okay, here's my IB platform, and you can see I have a watch list here with a bunch of products, including some futures products here. Here I've got the ES, the MES, the NQ, and the MNQ. So if I hover my cursor over top of the ES, it'll say this is the E-mini S&P 500. So this is the regular futures contract for ES. We also call it the SPOOS. The infinity symbol just means it's a continuous contract, which is the front month contract, and it's expiring June 18th, 2021. If I move down to the MES, it's called the micro E-mini S&P 500, and this product is one-tenth the size of the ES. Likewise with the NQ, this is the E-mini NASDAQ 100, and the MNQ is the micro E-mini NASDAQ 100, which is also one-tenth the size of the regular NASDAQ. So if you were to buy or sell one of these futures contracts, this would be what we call static delta. So your delta would not change as the product moves in price. So ES is $50 a point, MES is $5 a point, NQ is $20 a point, and MNQ is $2 a point. Now, if you didn't know that, I'm just gonna click on my products here and delete them. I'm pressing the delete key on my keyboard here, then right click, and now insert a new row. Actually, I'm gonna insert a few new rows, and now I'll type in ES, enter, I'll click futures, and it tells me right there, one point is $50 for the regular ES contract. I'll select the infinity symbol for the continuous contract. And then if I type in MES on the next line, click futures, this one is one point is $5. So again, I'll click the continuous contract. Same thing with NQ futures. This product is $20 a point. And the MNQ futures, this one is $2 a point. Now that we know the size of these products, there's another way to think about this in terms of static delta. So static delta is delta that does not change as the product moves or as volatility changes. So ES, we already said was $50 a point. Another way to look at that is if you were to go long one ES contract, that would be equivalent to 500 shares of SPY. And another way of saying that is that's equivalent to 500 beta weighted SPY deltas. So if you haven't seen my video yet about my theta versus delta ratio, make sure you check that out. I talked a little bit about beta weighted spy deltas there. And here's an example of a beta weighted spy delta. So ES would be 500 beta weighted spy deltas. MES would be 50 beta weighted spy deltas. And those are really easy because spy is the same product as the S&P 500 futures, just a different size. So if we just look at the S&P 500 products right now, so remember we said ES is $50 a point, MES is $5 a point. So what if I wanted to sell some options and try and collect some theta? So if I go to MES, let's start small. I love these small products. I'll go to the 49 days expiration using the regular Tasty Trade mechanics. So if I was looking to collect a credit of say $100, I'd be looking to collect a credit of 20 points. So 20 points times five, is $100. So let's scroll down on the put side. Oh, I already have a position in this strike here, but let's go further down to 20 points roughly. So let's say the 3750 strike. I'm going to hit the bid on the 3750 put. And if I put in a limit price of $20, there's my margin impact there. And if I click on margin performance, you can see that that's $100. So 20 points times $5 is $100 credit. Very small commission, 47 cents, which is great. And I can go ahead and transmit that. So that 3750 put contract that I tried to sell happened to be the 10 delta. So that's for MES. And remember we said for MNQ was $2 a point. So if I wanted to collect the same $100 on MNQ, I would be looking for a credit of 50 points. So if I scroll down on the put side, oh, I already have a position in this strike here. But if I keep scrolling down the put side and look for a credit of 50 points, so roughly here, the 11,840 strike, I'll hit the bid on that, which is selling that contract. And if I put in a limit price of 50 points, you can see the margin impact is actually negligible in this case. And it's because I already have some positions in NASDAQ. So that's the thing with span margining. Span margining takes into account all the other futures positions you have, whether it's NASDAQ, micro NASDAQ, 
S&P 500s or micro S&P 500s. It's taking all that into account. And this margin impact will be different for everyone depending on what other positions you have. So if I click on margin performance here, you'll see that's $100. So 50 points of credit times $2 is $100 in credit. I'll go ahead and transmit that. Again, the commission's very low, only 47 cents for one of these. And there we go. Now, selling those put contracts is what we call dynamic delta. The delta on those contracts can change as the product moves. The put contract that I tried to sell there, the 11840, happened to be the seven delta, right? Well, that's what we call dynamic delta. So that delta can change. If the NASDAQ was to go down, that strike there would get closer to the money and that delta would go higher. And I'm going to do a separate video talking all about delta. So keep an eye out for that. But basically the difference between dynamic delta and static delta is dynamic delta can change and static delta will stay the same regardless of what the underlying product is doing. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that in my last video, when I was talking about options on futures and the different options I was trading in the futures contracts, make sure you check this out. I had a little link here in my spreadsheet, and this is a link to the Tasty Trade Cherry Picks. So if you click on that, it takes you to one of the issues of the Cherry Picks newsletter. And right in here, it has all the major futures contracts, and you can see the S&P 500 forward slash ES is equivalent to 500 shares of SPY. And the MES is equivalent to 50 shares of SPY. And if you look down a little further, there's the NASDAQ, which is equivalent to 800 shares of QQQ. And the MNQ is equivalent to 80 shares of QQQ and has some correlations and some other information here that might be useful to you. Also, I didn't mention yet that there are also micros in the Dow Jones. So the YM and the MYM is the micro. And then the same thing for the Russell there's the RTY and the M2K is the micro Russell. Those two unfortunately don't have options. And because they're so highly correlated with SPY and NASDAQ, I wouldn't even bother trading them. There's some other things in here like the smalls, of course. So check that out. This is put out by Dr. Data, Michael Reckentine. And if anyone wants to sign up for the cherry picks, just go over to the Tasty Trade website, tastytrade.com, and you have to sign in with your email address. And just I've got here take the cherry bomb, cherry picks, tasty announcements, daily recap, and newsletter. But I do get a daily recap, most up to date Tasty Trade segments where they give us all the latest and greatest on how to improve your trading. This is all 100% free, of course. Okay, so that was a quick introduction to the mini versus the micro futures contracts. Hope you liked it. Let me know if you have any comments or questions, and thanks for watching.